So, Rod, this is not your first time in Branson. First time in this uh, convention center, but no, not the first time in Branson. Uh, the last, uh, you had some pretty wild days ending the, the session this year, the legislative session. Every end of session is always wild. There's no doubt. Are you are you glad to be out of uh, out of the legislature, or are you going to miss well, it? Yeah, no, I you know I had uh, my chance. I've got uh, eight years of service in term limits. Obviously, ends that, and uh, had a chance to uh, do the best I could to hopefully make things better and, and leave very feeling very good about the direction of the state and where we are today versus where we were eight years ago when I first when I went to Joe City. Uh, the last five days were kind of exciting there. Can well, they always are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always some big issues. There's always a conflict. There's always people not getting what they want or getting what they want. So it was no different than every other indecision I've ever been a part of. There was a lot of political pressure on our, I know our local representative would about the village law and probably some other counties. How was that leverage to, that particular political issue, leverage to make Missouri a better place in those past five days? Well, there's a difference of opinion on the village law. In my opinion, uh, letting land, local landowners have uh, power over what they do with their land uh, is very important, something that I think is the right thing. I mean, there's a lot of county commissioners, which I'm a former county commissioner myself. There's a lot of planning and zoning boards. And, uh, you know, they have friends. They play favorites. And if you're their buddy, you get your project. If you're not, you don't. If you, matter of fact, I had a reporter tell me he just drove down D.D. Highway, mm -hmm. and all of it in D.D. Highway where this controversy was, there's projects and developments everywhere, but for some reason, uh, Mr. Blaster couldn't get his approved. I, you know, I wonder why that is. So, I mean, uh, you know, there, whenever, whenever you have a big population, planning zoning is a more needed thing. I would now disagree with that. But there's a lot of counties like where I live, and there's places where it's not. And let landowners do what they want is a great thing, in my opinion. So let me let me be straight here. Are you suggesting that they were being a, a player hater because they didn't like Plaster personally, or it was isolated to one person? Well, from what I understand, if you drive up and down D.D. Highway, there's a whole lot of developments that have been approved. Uh, it seems awful ironic that his wasn't. I, I don't know right. the whole situation there. Okay. But his is not any different from stories I hear all over the state where a planning and zoning board proves one project but not another. They like this guy, they don't like it. That guy took him out to dinner, this guy didn't. And so uh, I like giving the landowners back a little power to say, buddy, we're going to do it our way. And I'm not aware of any place that anyone was trying to do a village that uh, they were trying to do something bad. They were all trying to make progress and do things properly and doing nice. There was a suggestion that there was some funny business in putting that into the economic stimulus package last year. How do you respond to that? Did well, you? At first, it wasn't put in the economic development package. It was put into a local government bill. And I've, we've been, I've been in Jeff City for eight years. Typically, a local government bill passes every once or two years. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's loaded up with all kinds of issues that are local government order. They always call them omnibus bills. And that's where this provision was put into uh, last year. Okay. And what, and what now? Very now that you're, now that you're. Normal process, actually. Very normal process. So it wasn't a sneaky, unusual thing that happened. It, was, it, it could not have been snuck in. As a matter of fact, it was put in in a committee a month before the end of session. It passed a committee vote. After the committee, vote, which committee? The local government committee. Local government the committee. Experts on local government issues. Right. After it went through that committee, it sat on the House calendar for over 20 days. Any member could study it, read the summary, look at it. It was brought up on the House floor, debated for well over six hours, had over 50 amendments to take things out or put things into it. After it passed the House, it went to the Senate. They put us in conference. We went to a conference committee, which people don't know what that means, but that means you get senators and reps from each chamber to come together and work out all the differences. They went through item by item, the whole entire bill. Anything that was different from the House version, Senate version had to be discussed and either put in or taken out. It was left in. Then both chambers, again, voted on the bill for final passage. So there was no way this was snuck in at the last minute, 11th hour of session, as was portrayed in the press uh, in a lot of points. And obviously that gets said, but if people go back and look at that record, they'll see that it just didn't happen. That interesting, interesting. What are you going to do now that you're not in the legislature? I'm working on campaigns. Oh, cool. I did that before I got here. I love working on campaigns. I like supporting people that, that I philosophically believe with, people that want to kind of let free market uh, you know, in the capitalism role. Uh, we want to get government out of people's hair uh, and do what we've done in the state. Take our state from a place that had very few big unemployment to now record number of jobs, high deficits to now huge surpluses, a Medicaid program that was broken and not serving the most vulnerable citizens to one that's now giving them access to quality health care, and a state that was withholding money from education and now a state that's passed the largest education budget in state history. I mean, those are some positive things. So you say, well, you know, hey, I'm right. very happy leaving. I gave it my best shot. Before I got here, we had deficits since I've been here. Things have worked a lot better. Any gubernatorial candidates that you're supporting? I'm with Kenny Holsoff. Okay. Yeah, I'm supporting Kenny Are Hulsoff. you heading his, his campaign? No, or? I'm not working okay. for him. I'm just volunteering to help him. 
got it. Got it. And, and uh, Sarah's a good lady too. Two good Republicans in that race. Uh, whoever wins, you know, I think we're going to be uh, well served in general. But uh, Kay, I'm, I grew up in Mississippi County, where Kitty Holstall's from. You know, oh, back with him. Okay. Anything? Any last words? Anything about the Senate or, or things that you don't think were? Excuse me, not the Senate, but the legislature that weren't covered that you thought needed to have more attention brought to. Well, you know, there's two areas that I could say that we need to make more changes. It's in the labor reform, right to work, uh, paycheck protection. That's an area where I think we've never been able to accomplish things. And then school choice. Uh, in the inner cities of Kansas City, St. Louis, we've got thousands of kids that aren't getting education. They're going to prison. They're costing our state a fortune. They're getting on Medicaid because they can't get a job. All because they're not lonely. And we need to try to find a way to do it differently because what we're doing now is not working up there. And uh, that was one of the areas we couldn't make a lot of progress. So if I'm leaving with things that we didn't get done after my eight years, those are the two issues, two areas that I you know, wish we could have made a little more progress.